Welcome, and thanks for joining me and this motley crew of a dozen as we take a look at some of the different motors, the mechanisms, and the materials you can use uh, to build your own animatronic props. We're going to be taking a look at all of these. We'll be discussing some of the benefits and, and some of the best ways to use them. And hopefully you'll find this useful and be able to apply this uh, in your own designs and your own builds. So I'm going to take a second, turn all these guys off. We'll look at each one individually and we'll get started. Okay, we're going to start off first with talking with materials. Now, you may have noticed many of these were built with PVC. Um, one reason I travel with these when I'm doing presentations and it's convenient light and doesn't overload my suitcase, but PVC is really a nice um, thing to use, especially for many of these lightweight props. There's no reason to be overbuilding them when all they're doing is moving a foam skull um, back and forth uh, or some light hands. So you can take advantage of the properties. You know, it's cheap, it's easy to work with, it, the parts are easy to get. Um, and with a few modifications, we can get them to do a whole lot of things. So um, that's one of the materials that we work with a lot. Um, now, of course, you can work with wood. Uh, you'll see a couple of these I've built with wood. Um, and um, again, cheap, easy to work with. We all have woodworking tools that, uh, that work well with that, or most of us. And uh, so that comes in really useful. It's, uh, you know, you get some more strength out of it, um, some more longevity, um, and you can use it for some of your uh, bigger and heavier props. So, you know, that's another option. Um, I do a lot of stuff with aluminum. I love working with aluminum. It's easy to work with. You can get uh, the parts from any of the big box um, uh, hardware stores. Um, and if you don't need something really super strong, um, you know, it's a really good option. It's easy to work with, um, easy to drill, easy to cut. So um, that's something you can think about. A little more expensive um, than the other two options, or the first two options. Um, but if you need a little bit more strength, and we'll look at that in the last one here, um, you know, that may be a good option for you. And um, of course, if you really need to build something um, heavy duty, you're using pneumatics, um, you know, we, we often go to steel um, and uh, you can either bolt those steel mechanisms together um, or even better, you can weld them. But uh, that's for another video. So today we're going to talk about these. And, and um, again, with PVC, uh, one of the nice things is, is to be able to get these to slide. And you'll see a lot of these different mechanisms um, where you've got uh, the head going up and, up and down or side to side. And uh, the trick we use for that, um, again, these are all with half inch PVC, but we get a piece of three quarter, we get a three quarter inch T. And, um, and we use a connector, the half inch to three quarter inch connectors to secure this. And then that half piece of half inch PVC will slide in and out of that, um, that piece. Now again, you can do it this way if you're rotating it back and forth, or you can do it this way up and down. Um, if you have to have a mechanism um, which uh, does both, you can always ream this out so that it slides on this so you can get the slide and the up and down. Um, do that with a Dremel or, or with sandpaper and, and, and sand that down. So, you know, that's what gives that, that uh, ability to move through um, the piece really well. Get a little bit of um, movement back and forth, but again, if that really bothers you, you really want it uh, much tighter, you can take this ream out either the fitting or your, your piece of PVC and have it rotate on that and have a much firmer connection. So that's one of the tricks we use. Um, you know, PVC is also easy to work with a heat gun. You know, you can apply some heat, you can get some, some uh, bends in them if you need to adjust them a little bit, so that can be really handy. And, um, you know, instead of using, um, for cutting it, uh, instead of using a hacksaw, which certainly works, um, a specialty PVC cutter um, like this one um, will really uh, make that job a whole lot easier for you. Um, one other thing is attaching the skulls. Um, these are foam skulls, of course, have got a hole in the bottom and, and they just can slide down over the piece of PVC pipe. But if you're using one of the plastic skulls, um, people often ask me, well, how do I attach that, you know, to the top of it? And, and I found a very simple solution. I just get a, a cap, a half inch, or if I need a three quarter inch cap, and I use these wall anchors these little spring-loaded wall anchors, and um, drill a hole in the cap, drill a hole in the bottom of the skull just big enough to get this spring anchor in there, thread it onto there, allow some room, 
so that you can get it and it can expand. Pop this up into the skull, tighten it down, and it forms a very firm connection to that plastic skull. So um, you, can, you might find that very helpful and useful for uh, making a quick connection uh, with the you know, inexpensive plastic skulls. So um, one other thing I wanted to mention um, for getting joints, um, this particular gout right here um, uses a kit from Spider Hill Prop Works, but they also have uh, for one inch PVC these great adjustable um, pieces. Um, you can loosen the nut on it, adjust it to whatever position you want, and uh, tighten it back down and make a very solid connection. So um, you might want to check that out. There is a link to Spider Hill Prop Works for this kit down below, but you can go to that site and, and find these. So I wanted to talk a little bit about different motors uh, before we got into the individual mechanisms. Um, and you'll see me using a lot of them. There's tons of them on, on the web that you can find. Um, these are just some of the more common ones um, that we've used in the past and we use now, so I wanted to show you those. Um, uh, one of my favorites was the, is the vent motors. These are vent actuators for your uh, heating and air uh, air conditioning on your car um, used to be very av available and very inexpensive. Um, they've since gotten harder to find, but I put a link down below um, to one model, an example to kind of get you started looking for them if you want to go with these. Um, they're very quiet. They have a reasonable amount of torque or power to them, and uh, you'll see them in the first couple of mechanisms. Um, they're, you, I found them online now for 13 to 15, 18 dollars for one of these. So uh, you'll see these. Uh, these are 12 volt. Again, they're coming right off uh, being used in your car. So 12 volts for these. Um, another popular mo model, and you'll see these in, in uh, some of the later ones, is a reindeer. We call them a reindeer motor. These are the motors that are in those Christmas decoration uh, reindeers you put out on your front lawn. Um, you know, they're waterproof. They're already pre-wired. They're 110. You just plug them into an outlet. Uh, got some mounting holes here. We usually just pull a couple screws out of here and drill through them and add some longer screws to mount them. It makes it really easy. Um, but these are really handy. Um, I put the link to Kindy's down below. About $12 for these, and they're really handy. Now, you can also get the motor that's actually inside of those um, off the web, and um, you can get these in a variety of different RPMs, which is nice. You're restricted to what it comes with uh, if you order the completed kit, but you can get them in different RPMs. Um, so uh, one of these props down here, you'll see this uh, where we've used these um, motors just plain. They've got a couple nice mounting tabs. Um, reindeer motors uh, don't have a whole lot of torque. Um, Kind of maybe about the same as a vent motor. Um, so again, you, primarily used for lightweight props. So if you need to use something that requires more torque, more power, you're lifting more weight, um, usually our go-to motor is a wiper motor. And this is a wiper motor just like it's in your car. Um, you can get these um, you know, off the web. Uh, you can get these from wrecking yards. You can get them you know, used. Um, I suggest I get all of mine from either Monster Guts or Fright Props, and I've put links again both to, to both of those down below. Um, very similar motors. If you're getting it from Mo Monster Guts, make sure you uh, also spend a couple extra bucks. Get the mounting um, bracket for or the mounting wiring harness. Uh, makes wiring it up a whole lot easier. The Fright Props comes with a harness uh, with bare wires. Um, so again, uh, make sure to pick that up. Um, these are very strong, um, very robust. You'll see them in a lot of these props here, and, and so we'll, we'll look at them um, in more detail um, as we go. Uh, when you wire these up, you have the option of high speed or low speed, just like the wipers on your car. Um, so that gives you some options. You can also control it by the voltage. Of course, they, they want 12 volts. That's what your car is supplying them with. But if that's too fast, you can put a 5-volt um, power supply on them. Um, I've used down to a 3.3-volt um, power supply that I've got on my stirring cauldron, my witch. So um, you can do that. One thing when you're looking at uh, wiper motor power supplies, um, make sure that you've got get one with sufficient amps. They take at least five amps, um, so you want a 12 volt, five amp power supply or five volt, 
five amp or more um, to run these. Uh, that's usually the biggest problem. People say, oh, they don't work. Well, they're usually not supplying them with enough um, amperage. So make sure to get that in your power supply. One other option with slowing down, especially the the wiper motors is to go with uh, pulse width modulation, the PWM. Um, and there's lots of options. Um, this one's from Fright Props, very robust, nice solid unit. Um, I use it quite a bit. You can see it's <laughs> pulled the wiring, pulled it right out of a, a different prop so uh, to use today. Um, but uh, that's very handy to use. Um, there's also other models that you can get online. Um, I actually got this one off of eBay. Uh, I'll put a link to it uh, down below. Um, it's less expensive, not quite as robust as the others. Um, be a little careful. Some of the pulse width modulation units uh, you get online um, will cause the motor to really hum when you slow it down. So you want to be able to control that speed without getting that, uh, that hum in there. So some different options uh, for controlling your motors uh, with that. So. Um, Without any further delay, let's go ahead and get into some of these different props and we'll look at the mechanisms. All right. Now I've included in this video mechanisms that should appeal not only to somebody just getting started building their first animatronic, but maybe somebody that wants to try something a little bit more complicated, a um, little more detailed. Um, if you're looking for something uh, even more advanced, you've been doing this for a while and would like to take a look at some of my favorite characters that I've built. Um, I've put a playlist uh, link up here. You can check those out and see some of the ones that, uh, that I've built. Uh, these are you know, much more complicated, more expensive, uh, require more programming, but give you an idea of some of the other options that you can maybe uh, work towards. So uh, with that, let's get started and start looking at some of these mechanisms. Now this first prop is uh, one of the most simple to construct. Uh, it simply uh, rotates around. Uh, you can plug this in and um, I usually run it on a controller so that uh, it'll run for a little bit, take a pause, uh, let the motor recover, uh, and then run again. Um, certainly one thing you want to check out when you are looking for a motor, if you're going to run it um, full time, you want to make sure that that motor is uh, rated for continuous motion. Uh, wiper motors are certainly um, designed for that, so they're a good choice when you're doing that. Um, as you can see, I just attached uh, the PVC with a cap, uh, and then it's got a quarter inch bolt that threads directly into the shaft of, uh, of that vent motor there. And then uh, to plug in that uh, wall wart, that 12 volt uh, wall wart, I just uh, soldered in um, a little two prong connector so it's easy to uh, change it out and, and uh, move them around uh, without having to unplug it directly from the motor. It does have a couple tabs in there, but I find it's a little better to solder those in. Now with this build, we've taken it up a notch. We've added another bracket uh, to get the motion we want. Uh, we're using that three quarter inch cross like we talked about earlier. And um, we've had to add some washers to the sides of this to provide the clearance. And um, you can see that. And you'll also notice that uh, that's connected uh, with a lock nut. Do you want to make sure to uh, at least uh, use a nylon lock nut or double nut your connections so that uh, they don't uh, work themselves loose um, you know, over the course of the evening or when they're working? And, and you'll also see this particular uh, uh, wall wart. I had uh, cut the connector off of it. And so you can purchase these little connectors um, that just wire in and allow you to make that new connection. Those are really handy. I always try and keep a lot of those on hand. Now we've switched over to a wiper motor for uh, this design. Uh, again, using the cross, uh, you'll notice that I did not add um, the uh, reducers to that cross, uh, so he kind of bounces around just a little bit. I don't mind that. Um, I like a little bit of the erratic motion, uh, but uh, build it the way you, that uh, appeals to you. Uh, again, having to add that extra shaft uh, bracket um, down to the wiper motor as well as another PVC bracket to uh, get this motion. 
and you'll notice that that wiper motor is attached to the base um, with something that you may recognize from the fencing department at uh, your big box hardware store. Uh, a lot of different uh, pieces over there uh, with the fencing, the chain link fencing uh, that you can find to uh, mount your uh, wiper motor securely and, and fairly inexpensively. Uh, this wiper motor is running at 5 volts um, and it's wired up to the uh, slow speed uh, which works the best I think for most of these props but uh, we'll look at the next one running on a 12 volt and we'll be able to compare uh, the different speeds. Now with this guy, I've decided to leave it with the 12 volt power supply, get him to run faster, get that uh, hair moving wildly. I like that look. Um, you'll notice that uh, it's got a T down there on the main shaft where it connects onto that upright. And then all the other pieces um, you'll see that are screwed on, especially with this guy's kind of wild. Uh, you know, you have, certainly have the option of not putting any uh, connectors on, uh, not securing them in any way, uh, where they have a tendency to fall apart through the evening. Uh, you can permanently build them uh, using glue, um, but I prefer to screw them in. This allows me to break them down for travel, break them down for storage, um, and also if I decide uh, ever to uh, you know, take them apart and, and use the pieces for a br brand new part, I get tired of them, uh, it's easy to unscrew them and then those parts are recyclable. Now I've included this prop uh, because I wanted to add something here um, for those that don't want to go through and build and design their own prop. Uh, you're interested in getting some kind of a kit. Um, I highly recommend um, this one. Uh, this is from Spider Hill Props Work, uh, link down below. And uh, again, run by a wiper motor and very robust, very solid, uh, lots of options for um, uh, putting together a very strong, uh, well-built prop from this. So, uh, just another option for you to consider. Now, this guy's a great addition to any graveyard uh, in front of a tombstone. Uh, cover him up, uh, put a couple hands on, on him, and uh, very spooky little design. Uh, we're getting into a little bit more complicated uh, build here, uh, where you have to uh, do a little bit more construction, uh, but still nothing too too complicated. Uh, it's a wiper motor again, and um, and you'll see there that um, I've used a hose clamp again. Another good option for uh, including uh, getting them attached. I've used the uh, bracket that came with the wiper motor, uh, and then just popped the the little ball off that comes on the end of it, uh, drill out the side uh, of it and, and knock it through with a punch. Um, then I'm able to put a, uh, a bolt through there uh, to attach that piece of PVC. Now many of us like to include a rocking chair uh, in our haunts and I've tried several different designs but this is certainly my favorite. Um, this is not my design. In fact, uh, many of these uh, mechanisms that you see are not uh, my original designs, although maybe I've uh, adapted them and changed them. But um, I've tried to provide the links to uh, the originals uh, down below for uh, all of the ones that I know. So I don't want to take credit for something I haven't built. But this uh, rocker mechanism is from ScareFX. Uh, the tutorial link, again, is down below. It's uh, really easy to build. I think it gives the best motion uh, for a rocking chair um, and is certainly, again, my favorite uh, method of making a rocking chair. We're now going to take a look at several different uses for uh, the reindeer motors, both uh, the originals that uh, you can get from Kindy's um, in the case, and uh, we'll look at some uh, with the uh, motors uh, that uh, we've picked up from Amazon or eBay uh, that don't include the case. Now, this is uh, from the original one-arm grave grabber. Again, the link's below for that original one. Uh, which it's a great little prop, uh, gets a lot of nice uh, comments in my haunt. 
Um, it has been heavily modified, and we're going to take a look at another uh, model a little later here. But um, this is a great prop, but it's uh, demonstrating one of the benefits of uh, using a reindeer motor, and that is the auto reverse. When it hits uh, some resistance, it automatically turns and goes back the other direction. So um, those two uh, drywall screws are there are just providing that uh, resistance just enough to get it to reverse and go back in the other direction. Really handy for a lot of different uh, designs. Including a three-axis skull in your build uh, adds a lot of character um, to your builds. Um, but it is an expensive uh, process, uh, requires uh, controllers, and uh, quite a bit more complicated. So uh, this particular prop uh, was uh, put together originally by PropMaster, and I've put the link to his original build, and I've since uh, uh, heavily modified it. And um, I'll put the link up above here. You can click on that to see my build. Uh, I'm still uh, working on this and, and modifying this as I go. But it does use uh, two different um, uh, reindeer motors. Uh, again, these are the ones outside of the case. Um, and uh, you can actually add d different RPMs so that each motion is uh, moving at a different speed. Uh, you can add a controller to turn these on and off, uh, which is what I usually do. Uh, so again, he'll have some ra more random movement, uh, move around for a while, stop, take a break, and then move again. Uh, gives the motor some time to cool down and um, also adds a little more lifelike uh, motion to it. Now this is a wonderful variation of the one armed grave grabber uh, done by Mike Young. Uh, really cool, all out of PVC. Um, love the action, love the hand coming down, uh, the jaw opening up uh, by just uh, uh, disconnecting that jaw and loosening it up a little bit so that, that you get a little bit of jaw movement uh, as he raises up. Um, I think Mike has got the, uh, the plans for this um, on the Rocky Mountain Group's uh, Facebook page. So if you're interested, uh, go over there and check that out. Uh, but again, great motion. It just shows uh, how much you can actually get done with the reindeer motor, how many different motions uh, you can get out of a prop with a little bit of ingenuity. Now I wanted to include a couple other things that maybe you wouldn't uh, originally think of as uh, motor driven. Having the ability to have a talking skull that runs with your soundtrack is a great benefit, a great addition to any haunt. Uh, and it, uh, in the past, has been fairly difficult to get it done, but uh, uh, Haunt Hackers has now developed uh, the wee little talker that makes the setup uh, and building one of these very simple. Um, this one, uh, I have it set up, it's running off that PIR that's hanging down below the skull there, um, but it can be set on uh, uh, just on a regular loop if that's what you prefer. Uh, but uh, if you want to see how easy this is to set up uh, the programming on this, again, don't be scared away by programming. It's all uh, push button uh, with uh, instructions to work you through it. Um, I'll put the link up above so that you can click on that and, and check that out. Uh, but this is a great addition, um, fairly inexpensive, uh, well under $100 uh, to be able to put one of these uh, controllers uh, in the servo together. Um, so check that out if you want to add talking to your characters. Now, this is an example of how you might include uh, using aluminum in your builds. Um, wanted to also include this. Uh, this is a linear actuator. Again, it's a motor-driven uh, actuator. And um, this is one uh, by Actuonics. Uh, but uh, also, if you want to kind of look at uh, how you could use linear motion and how to get started uh, using this, uh, Erie Acres Cemetery uh, did a really good tutorial that I've included down below on using door lock actuators. Really an inexpensive way to uh, get into using these and uh, using it with a remote control. Um, I think you'll find uh, very handy and a very easy way to get started. Now this particular one, uh, again, I'm uh, not talking too much about controllers, but this one's a little bit special. Um, I have that actuator actually uh, plugged into, uh, or 
connected to my Alexa. So uh, by using voice commands, I can uh, operate this prop. Now, as you can see, one of the drawbacks to using a um, linear actuator, uh, they're, they're quite a bit slower. Sometimes that's really useful um, in your prop, and you can get them in a variety of uh, speeds. Uh, of course, the faster they move, the less torque they have. So if you're using something very lightweight, you can go with an uh, actuator that's got uh, a faster speed. Uh, if you need to lift more weight, you know, go for the torque. So lots of examples there. And I uh, just wanted to show this as one other uh, uh, opportunity to use something a little different. Um, if you're really comfortable using your phone and using your apps, uh, you know, this is one way to uh, kind of control your props uh, and take it up one more level. Now, I'm not going to talk too much uh, really about controllers. Um, I do like uh, putting all my props, my animated props, on subtype of controller. But uh, if you're interested in taking a look at something just to get started, uh, one I might uh, recommend is um, the Picavolt uh, from Fright Props. Uh, it's really easy to program. It's kind of a one-stop uh, prop controller, and uh, it might be a way to uh, get a prop controller, you know, get your feet wet, uh, get comfortable using one before moving on to something a little bit more uh, complicated or that's something that requires a little more programming. I hope you found this useful. I hope you've got some ideas, maybe some things that you can include in some of your own builds. And if you did, uh, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the future builds. And uh, if you have any comments, uh, ideas, if there's any of these props you'd like to see uh, in more detail that um, I haven't included a link to, um, please post it down in the comments and I'll see what I can do to get you some more information on that. So until next time, happy building.